Hi, this is Derek Tsai from LearnByBlogging.com. Today I'm going to be reviewing this book called A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking um, the, uh, is a famous uh, uh, physicist. Uh, the updated expanded 10th uh, anniversary edition, um, Brief History of Time. Uh, this is the second time I read this book, uh, first time probably more than uh, 20 years ago. and. Um, uh, this time I was very motivated by the movie called uh, Martian um, uh, to uh, to read this book and find out what's going on with the uh, the space travel and all that stuff. Uh, the underlying thesis the book appeared to be uh, still valid, although it's uh, now it's in uh, it's a tenth anniversary edition uh, from its original 1988 edition. I probably read it back in um, <clears throat> around the 1988 uh, time frame. And uh, many of the theory are still diffi very difficult to understand for me, um, even with my own my engineering and physics study. Uh, some of the topics are refresh, uh, like the uncertainty principle. My t key takeaways are the um, the universe uh, still expanding, and uh, there's no absolute time and space. Everything is relative. And the grand unified theory is very difficult to prove. Uh, take uh, as much energy as the uh, the solar system, you know, if you want to prove it. Uh, the energy uh, that contained within the solar system. And um, the black holes are not so black. Uh, actually, I missed something. And number five, no single theory on how the universe began. Uh, even though uh, the authors speculate uh, how it began. So a quick summary, chapter by chapter, uh, our picture of the universe, uh, some theory, some history of how human come to understanding uh, understanding the, uh, the the universe since the Aristotle's day, time, and the two theory that describe them. Uh, there are the Newton's gravity in very large scale, and the quantum mechanics uh, small scale. A space and time, chapter two. Uh, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, even if the source is traveling. So um, it doesn't really add to the speed of the source, unlike most of the mechanical, uh, me most of the uh, um, uh, phys physics things inside on the Earth. And unfortunately, uh, Newton's gravity theory goes against idea because the, uh, the gravitational effect is instantaneous and have infinite speed. So the two um, really doesn't go hand in hand. And general theory of relativity get rid of the absolute time, and Newton's law of emotion, uh, law of motion puts the end to the absolute position. So we right now at this time, there's no absolute time. Even the space, even the uh, the place where I'm occupying now, uh, still moving because um, the universe is expanding. We don't know how. Um, uh, how the Earth, uh, how this Earth is rotating around the Sun, and Sun might be moving, uh, expanding at the same time. So everyone uh, really carry on his own or her own clock measuring time, depends on where he is and where he is moving. So pretty strange be um, thinking. And uh, chapter three, the expanding universe by looking at the stars spectra. Um, we know that the star tend to be ref shifted due to the Doppler effect, and the astronomer can tell the stars are, are, are from uh, from the other galaxy are mostly moving away from us. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, the gravity will cause the universe to, to collapse, and uh, this might explain why universe uh, looks very similar in all direction, receive the same amount of radiation from all the directions because um, they kind of randomly distributed, uh, expanding. So this lead to the possibility of a singularity or the Big Bang as the origin of time. So when general relativity uh, really breaks down. Then chapter four, uh, the uncertainty principle. The Heisenberg theory that um, spec specified that the more accurately you're trying to measure the position of the particle, the less accurate uh, you can measure its speed. So that the product of the two are uh, forms the, uh, the, the Planck, uh, Planck's constant. And the quantum state is a combination of position and the velocity. So the uh, electrons orbiting around the nucleus like a wave 
uh, with the wavelength that depends on its velocity numbers. <clears throat> so there's no absolute position. Um, there's only a probability uh, based on the wave function. And that's something we, uh, <clears throat> I think I studied that in f uh, physics uh, back in the college days. Um, chapter 5, Elementary Particles and the Forces of Nature. There are four categories of force. The gravitational force, electromagnetic force, a weak nuclear force uh, responsible for radioactivities, and, and four is the strong nuclear force that holds the quarks together in the, uh, in the proton and the, and the um, neutron. So uh, this is, you split it as a lot of energy. Uh, uh, will we'll give out a lot of energy. So that's how the atomic bomb, wor bomb works. So a lot of discussion about antimatter, antiquarks, and all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> in chapter 6, i uh, talk about black holes. Uh, lights have a duality of particles, a uh, particle that can bend by uh, gravity, and the waves are the quantum mechanics. So it has a duality, has dual property. So when a star loses energy, it starts to cool off, but the, uh, the Pauli exclusion principle, which keeps the particle away from another, maintaining a constant radius. Uh, so um, if you is less than this Chan Chandrasekhar limit, it will turn into a neutron star. Uh, if, it's, uh, and, uh, if more, then we'll explode and then uh, break up to their um, under the limit. Uh, let's break up the little pieces and then eventually end up to be the same uh, small pieces. So. Uh, <clears throat> So there's a very interesting how, uh, how the uh, objects behave in the black holes. And moving objects really send out gravitational waves that eventually reach the steady state uh, as it loses energy. Uh, like the Earth around the Sun, uh, <clears throat> when you, rock, when you uh, roll, orbit around the Sun, you actually give away, give out energy, eventually uh, the Earth will collapse into the Sun. And that will happen uh, 10 to the 27 years. Uh, I will probably won't be around that time. Probably don't care. And you know, this the human might have um, gone extinct by then. So black holes can be deduced by observing a star that's orbit around its own, because you cannot really see this thing. So they kind of orbit around each other, um, <clears throat> and uh, that's how we deduce uh, there's a black hole. <clears throat> Chapter seven. Uh, Black holes ain't so black. So black holes can really emit some radiation because the the conservation of, of energy. If things get sucked in, somehow you need to give out uh, to keep the, the energy uh, to the same. So what goes in the particle mass due to gravitational force must come out as radiation or antiparticles, antimatters. Um, go figure that one out. So chapter eight, uh, the origin and the fate of the universe. The universe started out in this big bang and very hot as it expanded uh, it cools down and lots of discussion about anthropic principles um, anthropic principle is if we can explain it uh, most like because uh, we can explain because we exist if we exist um, it's, it's a proof in itself so it's hard to explain why the universe is the way it is it actually takes a lot of delicate balances of the elements and all that stuff in order for us to, be, to exist, on a Big Bang to happen, a universe to happen. So the total energy of the universe is a big zero. Uh, everything in <clears throat> conservation of energy. So classical theory of gravity, the universe may have existed um, uh, for infinite time and, and begins in a singularity. So based on the classical theory of gravity, but the quantum mechanics, uh, there may not be a boundary condition known as an edge. So it depends on which theory you hold, uh, it might have a different beginning. Um, chapter 9, the arrow of time, the increase of disorder or the entropy with time gives the direction of time. So things tend to get more random and that tell you that, that give you a hint that time is traveling forward. A thermodynamic sense of time is that different, um, different from a cosmological sense of time. The universe is expanding. And the psychological sense of time is we feel like we're getting old, the time passes and all that stuff. So that's how you de determine um, how the, uh, the time is traveling. Um, so if you're getting younger or any, you know, that might explain uh, the time is traveling in reverse. I don't think that will happen. 
I hope so. Uh, wormholes and time travel. So the comics, uh, cosmic strings are, are discussed here. Wormholes may be the way to warp the space time to travel back in time. Um, a lot of discussion about time traveling forward, backward, under various theory. Um, there's no conclusion and nothing very interesting there. Chapter 11, Unification of Physics. The string theory can be used to unify all the physics theory, the, uh, the quantum mechanics, uh, the theory of relativity, and the gravita uh, Newton's theory. Uh, even if we can find one, may not be able to prove it, so what good is that? So conclusion is that <clears throat> Uh, the days after we, if we discover the unified theory, we may be able to explain or discuss why we or the universe exist and the true triumph to the human race if that actually happened. So, um, rather interesting. And uh, this is the book, Brief History of Time. I plan to read the next book, The, uh, the Grand Design by uh, Stephen Hawking. But overall, it's um, a nice refresh and um, interesting book. That's all I have. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.